Hi everyone and welcome to this part 2 in the series for building your own pedals um, using load cells. So in the last uh, video we got the load cell giving us a value in the serial monitor of the Arduino IDE. So in this video we need to take that the next stage and get the sim racing games to recognise the um, output of the load cell um, as a joystick axis. So I'm not going to rush ahead too much uh, with these videos on the basis that um, it probably takes some time for some of the load cells and equipment uh, to come from China if you're using the links that I've provided in the description of video one in the series. Um, so in order to let people catch up um, I'm only going to uh, do this in sort of sh um, short videos to start with uh, we're releasing them once every week that will also give me time to do some of the design work on the pedals themselves and uh, get laser cut parts in so that we can actually uh, keep progressing each week. So as you can see I've used a bit of alley profile to just mock up a little mount for the load cell um, so I can press on the end here or put a known weight on the end of it as a way of calibrating the load cell. I happen to know that this hammer is just under a kilo. So if you download the sketch that's um, listed in the description and upload that to the Arduino board in the same way that we did the sketch in the first uh, video. Just make note that um, the wiring on the Arduino board and the HX711 is as per video 1. So if you didn't uh, register that or have skipped ahead a bit, um, the clock pin is pin 0 and the data pin is pin 1. If you wire your, you can wire them up on, on different uh, pins on the Arduino board but you must change your sketch to um, reflect what you've what pins you're using uh, if you're obviously going to copy my wiring then like I say data is pin 1 and the clock is pin 0 and what we've got if we just look through the um, sketch one of the first things we need is a calibration factor so by default I've put it at 28,000 which is working for my load cell um, but I had to have a little bit of a play around with that. So you're most likely to have to change that calibration factor as well. Right, if we go into <coughs> tools, serial monitor, it will bring up the live value from the or the calibrated line value from the load cell. Uh, it's rounded to the nearest whole digit. So if I then pr put on my known one kilo hammer, which in reality, when it comes to doing um, the pedals properly, I would put on a heavier weight, something more in the range that I'll actually be using the pedals for. Um, so that we know that it's linear or more linear at uh, that sort of in the range that we're going to be using. Anyway, at the moment I'm putting my one kilo on it and I'm getting one kilo uh, result. That's because I've got my calibration factor uh, correct. Obviously if you put your known weight on and you get a different value, I take my weight off, I get zero. Yeah, so if you put your known weight on and you get a wrong value, then you need to tweak the calibration factor, re-upload the um, sketch to the Arduino and try again. Uh, so there's a bit of trial and error, uh, but you should be able to, uh, within a few hits, um, find a value that's, that's pretty running accurate. Running the view shows us all the joystick axes that are available from any um, compatible devices that are attached to the PC. So go to settings and make sure that the Arduino Micro 
is checked so that you've got all the axes for the um, load cell board that we've got and uncheck anything else. To make it a little bit clearer we can remove some of the other axes if we want. Um, let's just leave them all up so you can see what the like, default screen is. Okay, so down here is the brake axis. If we right click and go to view raw data, we can see what the uh, readout levels are, the value, the raw values coming from the load cell. So in this case, minus 32,767 at zero. And in order to calibrate this so that zero load is zero percentage and in this case on this load cell 100 kilos is 100% we go to right mouse click again and calibration we put in the raw value at the minimum so what it says here at the moment minus 32767 then we put 100 kilos on or in my case as much as I can press find what the value is so about 29,000 that's our max and then the midpoint between those two values so I in this case the minimum minus the maximum divided by 2 plus the maximum value again gives us minus 30,883 as our centre point that's our calibration done and then what we've got see is we're zero with zero load on and if I press down on the load cell you can see it slides along 52% at the moment so we know that our load cell is giving us a linear output on the brake axis and that axis should now show up in game so now looking at the um, DI view readout at the same time as pressing on load cell. We can see on the brake axis at the top there a hint that it's operating. So that should now mean that in game this brake pedal will be visible. So we should be able to select this as a brake pedal um, in R Factor 2 and any other sim title really um, and use it as a brake in theory. So let's give that a try. Okay, so the next thing to do start up R Factor 2. Uh, well, any sim game, but I'm going to use R Factor 2 in this instance. And then uh, I'm going to go to settings and controls. And at the moment, my brake throttle and clutch are all off on my normal pedals. If I select the brake and then push on the load cell, it will detect it. And I can just push it a little bit there and see that it's detecting it and working as I would expect, which is great news. And then if I go into race, we can drive the car using the load cell as the brake and just give it a little test. See how effective it is. And yeah, works all right. For what it is, it's pretty good. Pretty pleased with that. Okay, so thanks everyone for watching. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel so you get notifications of any new videos that I do, especially the ones uh, for the next part of the series. Until then, thanks for watching.